Hi, I'm Hannah Wallace and welcome to Finextra TV. With me now, speaking in the lead up to EBA Day 2022, is Mike Walters, CPO at Form 3. So welcome, Mike. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Looking forward to it. Really good to have you on. And now I know uh, Form 3 has been incredibly busy, particularly because of your expansion into the US. And that's really where I want to start. So could you expand on that for us? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so you're right. It has been busy. We've been growing uh, very fast uh, across uh, the UK and Europe, uh, and we're really excited about uh, the next the next step for the the platform and our technology into the US. So um, we've got uh, we've got people on the ground. Um, we're, we're building out the services to to kind of do what we've been doing in the UK and uh, and Europe, but to help uh, those US banks to transform their tech stacks um, first with with connectivity into real-time payment systems that are uh, growing and emerging in the in the US market. All right, thanks for that, Mike. I'm sure you're looking forward to speaking to delegates more about that at the event. Now let's get a bit more technical and talk about multi-cloud strategies. Tell us what makes multi-cloud strategies such an attractive approach to those large financial institutions and why are UK incumbents the perfect pioneers? Uh, yeah, certainly. So. I think one of the things that's been really apparent in our journey to uh, you know large tier one organisations uh, really embracing uh, the platform of public cloud is is a question around operational resilience. So, you know how how uh, how safe can you make this in the day to day running of the platform, and also how can you make sure that you're not dependent on an individual cloud service provider, so an AWS, a Google, or Azure. So, you know we're we're really excited to uh, to be uh, releasing out into the market a, a multi-cloud model that effectively means the platform runs completely active across those public clouds um, and I think that's you know answers two questions you know what, what happens if there are temporary issues with services in an ind individual cloud but it also you know proves that um, our customers are not dependent on a, on a single cloud provider um, the UK is great for that you know we have a very mature regulatory market you know we've got um, you know large-scale organizations adopting cloud uh, at, at speed um, and so you know the volumes that we're pressing on our platform this gives us a really good opportunity to showcase um, you know what is technically um, I think not been done before in the in the payment landscape for account to account um, and then really export that same understanding to other customers in Europe and the US as well. All right, that's interesting. So let's move on to look at some of those challenges following on from that. Tell us how significant is the potential impact of APP fraud on European financial institutions and why should financial institutions look to the UK market to prepare for real-time fraud prevention strategies? What about that? So I think the the UK is is pretty unique in in payment land with um, you know both mature card and and real time account to account. So you know it's it's taken the knocks. You know it's learned from the evolution of of both of those uh, systems at scale. Um, and I think it's it's very evident over the last few years that um, particularly uh, push payment fraud uh, has been escalating rapidly um, in the UK market. And so. You know, with an emerging real-time market in Europe and a, and a slightly yeah, a slightly newer uh, and soon to emerge real-time market in the US, um, you know, we're we're really keen and we think it's a really good sort of yardstick of how that's evolved for those other markets to to kind of get ahead of it. Um, you know, it, it it is a different fraud vector. It is something that's different for consumers and banks to understand. Um, and and we found particularly. It's a hard one to stop in flight in real time. And, and that's really the space that we're focusing on. So, you know, if, if, we're, if we're able to help a, a bank transform its tech to make the payments work, then we can do the same thing to stop those payments in flight um, by using, um, you know, data sources and, um, and our processing capability. So I think it's going to be really, really important for Europe and the US to learn from the UK and, and get ahead of that. Sure, watch this space and thanks for setting the scene there and clarifying a few things. So what should the response be then? How should banks go about improving those cross-border transactions uh, when those client expectations are so high and uh, the market's saturated with all these solutions we're seeing? Yeah, so I think this is about um, banks really understanding what role they want to play in international payments. And, you know, I think for, for, our, for our customers and certainly for larger financial institutions, you know, they've done this before, they've been doing it for years. And actually, it's it's kind of like all other areas of their estate. The question is, can you do that? Uh, can you do that better? Can you do that more cost effectively? You know, is it now time to refresh the underlying technology that that they're using? 
Um, and so the two areas that you know we're we're working on, um, you know, to help with that is, you know, thinking about how swift infrastructure should be used for for those particularly large players. What's you know what's a good way of of managing that effectively and and uh, and in a resilient way. Um, also thinking about those banks that maybe don't want to outsource the whole process of cross-border payments, um, but they want reach and they want um, markets and capabilities that um, liquidity providers can can market. So we, we, we're sort of um, taking the view that those larger organisations can can effectively choose combinations of these things um, mm -hmm. rather than necessarily having to do one model to suit you know every type of transaction that they're that they're looking at we we can kind of help them to to pick the best of both sure some really good advice to end on there and i urge uh, anyone attending eba day to go find you to learn more we certainly will uh, but mike um we'll leave it there thank you so much and look forward to seeing you at eba day been a pleasure see you there